Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Zombie Train. This is episode 257 and I'm your host Ellis, otherwise known as Train Man. Today we have footage from Modern Construction episode 42 where we build more track and bridges and things like that and roads. And if you want to go see the full thing of that, Under Construction is coming out about the same time. So anyways, today we are talking about a question from our very own East Rail 11. And he asks... When you got a supply of fuel, not coal, did you ever use airplanes for faster transportation of many people? Well, I mean, the military, before I get into how we used it, the military resorted using things like C-130s for reconnaissance, and uh, paradrops, and supply drops, and things like that, for places that were effectively out of their, uh, out of their immediate area, out of wherever that they could target, uh, with or, no, sorry, out of the area that they had encircled and made um, safe. So they were using planes. They did have a limited amount of fuel for that. Uh, there were also some reconnaissance aircraft. There was, in particular, a solar aircraft that just went around the world uh, just unendingly and uh, did recon. But that isn't really the spirit of this question. So this, this question is asking us, what did we do with them? Um, in the early days of the Zombie Train Incorporated, we did not do much. We didn't really use planes that much anyways, because, first of all, airplane fuel is difficult to come by, whether that be jet fuel or, you know, even just gasoline, if you have, if you're using that, uh, but the, you know, airplane fuel is tough to make. It's, you know, something that's a refined oil product, which I've talked about how difficult it was to come by that, um, and how many years it took us to get to the position where we, where we could be refining oil again. And additionally, there is a section in the Zombie Survival Guide which details the use of planes, and the thing is effectively don't, because they're very loud, they can't land a lot of places. Taking them off is, you know, even harder, perhaps. And basically, you're just a you're just a flying target. You know, you, you'll collect zombies. Uh, they'll be following you. They may not follow you that quickly because they're zombies, but they will be following you. Um, and we never made that much use of that. We definitely did. In some cases, especially with transport, you know, we did transport some people that way, but that was usually from an established safe zone to another established safe zone. Because you need to have airfields, or else you're going to have a bad time. We did make use of other aircraft, but not airplanes. And I've talked about the use of the D-Corps in World War Z, the original Corps, uh, the use of the Enterprise, which was our thing, and even just some other methods like hot air balloons, uh, usually for reconnaissance in that case. But, yeah, there were a couple of times where either we were evacuating someplace or we were bringing soldiers in that we decided the best option was to use planes. Uh, one city in particular, it was a Midwestern city, and we had it garrisoned, but we knew we weren't going to have enough people because... It was a Midwestern city, and I've talked about how massive, massive uh, hordes of zombies would sort of roam the plains. And so there was the opportunity for us to bring people in on basically an airliner that they had ripped all the seats out of just to fit more people. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, this was not really a sanctioned military operation because... They probably wouldn't have let us fly a plane with no seats in it. But we had a guy who was a pilot, and we had some people willing. And by some people, I mean like a thousand people. Uh, and so we did that. We did it. We, we brought people in. We had plenty of equipment. We really just needed the bodies. We needed people to shoot rifles and, and you know build walls and stuff like that. This was from like the northern... 
from the northwest, I think, somewhere around Seattle. Or maybe it was Portland. No, it couldn't have been Seattle, because Seattle got wrecked. So yeah, it must have been Portland, which makes sense, because we had contacts over there. Um, and the pilot, in particular, was not somebody who was really with the military, but he was more with us. And that's sort of... that's That's the reason why this was able to happen. This was one of the things that we flew under the military's radar, you know, in a, in a figurative sense as well as a literal one, because we needed the people, we weren't getting the people, we had the opportunity to get people, you know, those that had just been sort of laid up in Portland, not doing much, ever since the front had moved eastward, and we decided, you know, maybe we could take advantage of this situation, so we did. Uh, it paid off, too, because we were able to hold down the city for another, uh, I don't know, however many weeks it was, maybe a few months, until the military arrived, which we knew they were on their way, we just knew they were going to take longer than we could hold out, because at this point in time, they were, they were you know, a few hundred miles from us at least, they were encountering resistance. We had gone in with a relatively small force, couple hundred people, and taken the city, or at least uh, the airport area and the important things for the Zombie Train Incorporated, not like downtown. Uh, and I wish I could remember which city this was. But I want to say it was either St. Louis or like Kansas City, or, you know, something something like that. And we managed to, yeah, we managed to get that area, but we were getting, you know, we were... We were besieged. They could get us supply drops. They could not get us people. So they gave us tons of supplies. We said we'd handle the people. They didn't ask questions. We flew, we flew in a plane full of people, landed it. It was out of gas at that point. Couldn't leave. Uh, technically a crash landing, I guess. And we used those, you know, several hundred to a thousand people, however many it was, crammed in that plane to... Uh, to reinforce our defenses enough to uh, to secure the city for you know another several weeks until the military arrived, and that was probably the most prominent use because we really you know it was something that we tried to stay away from. It was something that we avoided quite heavily because of all the reasons that I stated, but there were. You know, there were some practical purposes, you know, these non-subversive purposes, where we had to move people from the East Coast to the West Coast. And if you didn't want to run a troop, a troop train across the country, which could sometimes be dangerous and risky, and you had the fuel, which that was the real big problem, then we could load people on a plane and send them across the country. And that's only, you know, a, a, a four-hour flight, maybe, three or four hours, depending on the aircraft. You know, maybe longer if it's a slower craft. But the um, the the usage of that was was limited. Also, that's the kind of thing where you did fly high. So when you were passing over areas where you would cause a problem, you were you know sort of you were out of sight. You were out of the hearing range of the zombies. Just because you were thirty thousand feet up. And I don't know. It's yeah. It was it was limited. It, they were useful. Fuel was of course the biggest problem. Once we started refining, then we could do those cross country things a little bit more. Uh, a lot of the troop movements, especially large troop movements, ended up being relegated to planes. Uh, we started tossing around the idea of doing paratroopers into certain areas, and we did a couple of missions like those. One of them went pretty well, which seemed promising, and the next one failed miserably, and we realized the first one was probably a fluke, because paratroopers tend to end up being blown around and might not all land together, and when you've got an individual in an area infested with zombies, he's probably going to have a bad time, uh, and it's tough to coordinate everyone to, to work together like that, because, you know, radios, stuff like that, are not in the best of supply. So, 
you end up having a lot of scattered groups. It's, you know, who's going to run into who? How many zombies are they going to run into? It was very much a, a random chance that the weather was pretty good. Most of the troopers landed in a pretty close radius, and there didn't happen to be that many zombies nearby. Uh, the second operation, the population of zombies ended up being much higher than the first operation. There was, you know, enough wind that it caused problems, and it wasn't even that much wind. And it just, you know, the zombies also managed to spot a lot of the guys coming down because it was during the day. And we tossed a, we again went back to the drawing board, tossed around an idea of a night drop, but it's that's that's too much. It's there was too much in the way of stuff to go wrong. Uh, there were too many variables, and it was too much of a risk. It was easier to just push push into a zombie-fested area very slowly, or set up defenses and draw them to you, which... That was probably the last uh, ingenious use of planes. And this we had to pick slower stuff for, like crop dusters, biplanes, uh, just whatever we could pull up. Because while you could draw zombies with a loud noise like an explosion or something like that one of the more uh, one of the more interesting ways that we decided that we could do it was if you took a, a plane and flew it out over where you knew the zombies were you know just did some circles and whatever and you'd start to see them cluster on the ground and try to follow you and then you would lead them or you would at least fly off towards where the garrison was, or where the defenses were. And that actually worked fairly well. The only problem was it was a little bit costly in terms of fuel. So we only did that a couple of times when we knew that that was the best solution. When we knew that, like, certain geographical features or large buildings would end up blocking the sound of whatever we were trying to use, or whenever we didn't have you know, a large explosive device or something to make a lot of noise. You know, something to make enough noise that would be carried out over a large area. And the nice thing about the plane is you could bring it, you know, quite a distance out without being, pro without it, you know, without wondering, oh, did, you know, do you think those guys over there hurt us? You had very tight control over where, uh, you know, where zombies that heard you were. Which that was pretty important. That was something that, uh, that was something that turned out to be, you know, almost more useful than we initially anticipated. Probably because what ended up happening was a good number of the time we would set off a, a device, a bomb, and it would, you know, create a loud, a loud explosion, and a bunch of zombies would come out of the woodwork and you know, rush the defenses, quote-unquote. It wouldn't be a rush, because they're slow. But, you know, they would come at the defenses, we'd clear them all out, we'd figure, okay, we got this area, this area's clean, we're good. But, then we'd go into the area, and there'd be more zombies. And it just would happen to be ones that didn't hear it, or weren't able to come in, come in our direction, but when we moved, we ended up finding them. We ended up going into an area that they couldn't get out of. And that second thing still happened with the plane. But it was in a way that you could, you know, you could almost kite them if there was a indirect way. You know, if they had to go around something, which usually they weren't smart enough to do. They would wander into traps and stuff like that. Uh, and, I don't know, it, it presented stuff, but it wasn't the people moving godsend that it is in real life, or in, you know, in the pre-war, I guess, is what I mean. It was good for supply drops, though. That was, that was the main thing. That was the thing they were used most for. Just little areas of civilization that needed uh, a little bit of help with food or uh, ammunition or something like that. But, yeah, that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you I hope I answered your question. If you have a follow-up or if you have something 
else that you may have thought of, feel free to post it in the comments, and I will get to it as soon as I can. Train Man out.